Let's talk now to uh, Amelia Hadfield, the uh, head of politics at the University of Surrey in the UK. Amelia, this is a complex result, really, isn't it? Certainly in many, many constituencies. What message do you think that uh, UK voters sent out? I think it's, it's a resounding message of uh, a rebuke, in fact, to the Conservative Party of a profound disappointment um, at, at years of political malaise and um, uh, failed uh, policies in many ways, uh, and a sort of ongoing internal psychodrama within the leaders of the uh, Conservative Party as a whole. And, uh, quite frankly, after crisis after crisis after crisis, a sort of omni-crisis, if you like, uh, they've, 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 they've just simply had enough, and they have cast their votes uh, seemingly um, listening to and, and believing and following the clarion call for change uh, from Keir Starber of the, of the Labour Party. And Labour have affected um, the, the greatest uh, swing in history, as we've seen. They've come, in fact, from a lower base than they originally had uh, back in uh, 1997, and, and they've clobbered the opposition. So you have 650 seats in the, in the House of, uh, of Parliament and the House of Commons, and Labour have claimed 412 seats, and the Conservatives have been really whittled right back down to 121, and the Lib Dems have done better than they've ever done in, in history, 71 seats. That's, that's quite a bit higher than they themselves were expecting, and you have four Reform UK uh, seats. That's certainly the protest vote, and that has eaten into the, the Conservative um, heartland, and it leaves it as something of a rump. Uh, and four green seats as well. And we've also seen uh, Labour doing extremely well um, in Scotland. Uh, the, the Scottish National Party, the pro-independence party, having been whittled right down to nine seats. So that's a deep disappointment. So there are me many different messages being sent, but I think the, the most important one is voting with Labour for change and voting against the Conservatives for any continuation of what we've seen in the last 14 years. What are Prime Minister uh, Keir Starmer's priorities, do you think, for the next 100 days? He campaigned on a, a mission of, of national renewal and bringing trust and confidence uh, back into the program of politics and sort of resuscitating um, the, the trust that you have in individual politicians. And I think the reason that he's, he's done that is because that's been so badly broken with, with the Conservatives. Um, so he has spent uh, last night uh, in terms of his, his, his victory speech and then this morning on the steps of the House of, uh, on the, of the front of Number 10 Downing Street um, talking about unification, uniting our country, standing together, um, but also t talking about the very real problems that he inherits. Um, so Yolo mentioned there, and he's quite right, um, you know, the, the, the fiscal structure of, of, of Britain is very, very complicated right now, very, very high debt. The National Health Service continues to be incredibly creaky. Some would say it's on its knees. We've seen climate change U-turns. We've seen a sort of broken social contract, if you like, um, higher education education also um, in, in badly in disrepair um, and international relations that also need to be put together. So he has a, a, a formidable inbox, if you like. He's going to need to appoint cabinet ministers with an astute understanding of problem solving, each with a clear portfolio um, and who are going to go out and have to go out almost immediately. I was, I was very struck that there was very little triumphalism in, in the speeches we've heard thus far. It's a sort of let's get together, let's get to work, um, understanding and inviting the British people to be part of the rebuilding. We've been watching the rise of the far right across Europe. What can we say about the uh, far right vote in the UK? I don't know if it has the heritage that we have um, in terms of the far right um, groups in the European Union. Um, these are uh, groups that actually have held power or in fact currently hold power in places like Hungary or laterally Poland or the Czech or Slovak republics. Um, in countries where they don't hold power, uh, they have become a, a formidable uh, widespread force and we've seen that in the European Union parliamentary elections a few weeks ago and we've seen them um, causing shock in places like France where Macron felt compelled to call a snap election. I don't think the groundswell 
is is that well established to be honest here in terms of reform uk they they had a fairly in interesting vote share certainly larger maybe than the four uh, seats that they have in parliament would suggest but Farage himself said, you know, this is just the beginning. His eyes, I think, are on the 2029 national election. And what he's trying to do is to build up a, a national movement that accords with the Reform UK ideology, which itself is largely based um, on contesting and disputing initially conservative ideologies, uh, but probably laterally where, where Labour itself chooses to go. And also taking a swipe at things like uh, the European Union, uh, immigration, migration, um, jobs, skills, etc., etc. Amelia, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme. Amelia Hadfield, Head of Politics at the University of Surrey. Thank you.